My name is Zoe Allen. Um, I'm a volunteer here at PAWS. Um, I'm actually probably one of the youngest volunteers. I'm 18. When I was about five, we were babysitting my grandparents' cats while they were um, out of the country. One of the cats escaped and was missing for months. And um, they finally found him. And he was just so old and so tired. Um, and nobody, uh, nobody contacted us and they put him down. And so um, I really like no-kill shelters because when they find an animal, they don't put them down. And it was just a really nerve-wracking experience for our family because the cat was meant so much to my grandmother and she was so devastated by its loss. The majority of the animals were being killed in the shelter because they had nowhere to go. And so PAWS was formed as a way to, um, to address that problem. We left the animal control facility in 2009 um, to become a totally independent um, organization. We are now um, the largest no-kill shelter in Philadelphia. We have a staff of almost 30 people, hundreds, thousands of volunteers at certain times, um, and um, working to, to save lives every day. I'm Melissa Levy, Executive Director of PAWS. really began as a very small idea with kind of very big goals and it grew very, very quickly. In 2008, we had raised enough money to open our adoption center uh, at Second and Arch in Old City and that was a major moment for us. We had finally our own brick and mortar facility. Um, we filled it with adoptable cats and dogs and it's been running now for five years. And we also opened this facility here, which is our spay-neuter clinic, um, and it also serves as our shelter space. largest no-kill shelter in Philadelphia and a lot of people come to us because of that but within the organization we don't see a big difference between no-kill and the shelters that are forced to euthanize due to space. Most shelters don't kill willy-nilly. Um, a lot of people have incorrect assumptions about what that means. Really it's when we simply don't have a cage and there's a dog in front of us and we have to put it somewhere. So you know at a certain point we're really all doing the same thing. Here, sometimes people will ask us to hold an animal for a couple of days until they're ready to adopt, and we say, no, we cannot do that, because this cage, this animal is safe. We're no kill, nothing's gonna happen to Cecilia, but if we keep her cage full with her for another three days, that's one more animal at the city shelter that we can't save. And um, I think emotionally, we all, see that and know how important it is to, you know, get them out into good homes, but get them out fast. It's adorable how he like wobbles. He has to like splay himself out just so he can stand. Oh. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. 
you work with the motivation every single day. You work with the animals that are the reason why you work so hard, the reason why you allow yourself to get stressed out, why you allow yourself to work longer than you probably should, or more days than you probably should. But um, but yeah, it's that day that, um, oh, there's a very squeaky sneeze. Uh, that day that your favorite dog or cat gets adopted and you're seeing them leave or you're hearing from an adopter who is thrilled about an animal that they adopted and you're like, no, that, that's right, that's why I do this. It's also pretty amazing to be able to say, I'm having a really stressful day, I'm going to go hold a kitten for 15 minutes. <laughs>